So we've splined some greens, we've splined some fairways, we've splined some tee boxes, and now we have all that area in between those things, right? So what do we do with that area? Well, you've got some decisions to make here. So let me go into uh, Hershey Country Club, where we've been doing a lot of this work. And let's just take back up and take a look down on this course and and make and, and let you know how my mind is working here, and hopefully you can make an informed decision. Which is, I'm looking at the vast amount of area in between my tees and my greens and my fairways, which is this green, this lush green that's on this course. Hershey Country Club. This area is what I would consider just rough. Um, in that this is a fairly manicured course. And if you hit things off the fairway and into the middle, like the trees here or the trees here, it's just going to be rough. It's not a horribly terrible, it's not a horrible lie. It's mowed pretty well, but it is rough. However, I do see in here, like this area right here, this is unkept. And you can tell by the satellite image that it's unkept. And that would be more like deep rough. It's going to be very difficult to hit your ball out of there. It might even be something that later on I want to deem as a hazard, and you can do that later on. I also know from the course that there's an area right here in these trees. If I zoom in a little bit, uh, I think it's actually right here on the other side of this pond. This is also similar to this area over here in that it's, un it's a lot of undergrowth and what I would call deep rough. So what I don't want to have to do in this course is spline all this like deep rough area individually. It doesn't make sense. I'm not gonna you know put rough kind of like an extra shape around here for rough. What I'd like to do is is do some type of almost like a default shape around everything I see here to fill in to do rough, but have an exception here for these two areas right here and right here that are deep rough. So let's do this. So let's do our exception areas first because they're smaller than the, what, what I'm gonna consider our rough area. So let's look at these two and just spline these two. So I'm going to go to my draw tool here, my Bezier tool, and let me just quickly draw out this, you know, very undergrown, overgrown, deep rough area here. And done. So let me just zoom in and make sure it looks okay. I don't see anything that indicates to me that there is a double node or anything there. And now let me go along the bottom and let me find, so I got deep rough here. Now you notice my pop-up's not working. I'm not sure why, but if your pop-up isn't coming up like I was showing before, look underneath, right underneath my mouse, you can see it shows you the same information there, which is deep rough, no blend, okay? That means the outside of this will have no blend. It's gonna be a hard edge, okay? Um, so it's something to keep in mind that if you want this shape to blend into the surrounding areas, you would need to potentially do something like a custom. So over here, we've got this idea of a custom one. And custom one, if you look, is a 12 centimeter blend. So if I wanna blend this, I might wanna consider doing custom one. And then later on, okay, in Unity, I can make this look like deep rough and behave like deep rough. But I have to define the blend if I wanna do a blend now, okay? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to leave this at custom one because I want to blend on the outside of the shape between here and this, which is going to be rough, which I haven't shown you yet how to do that. But for the sake of experimentation, let me do another area here. And that way you guys will be able to see what it looks like in Blender. And I would suggest you do this too. Now's the time to experiment. You're only doing two holes, okay? And you can come back and you can always fix this. So now this is defined as a, again, a custom one. I'm gonna change this to deep rough. Again, remember that's no blend. So now this is gonna be a hard edge. There's gonna be no blend between this shape and what it connects to here. Okay, so now I've got these two defined. Now, even though they're different colors now, and this one's deep rough, this is defined as custom one, no worries. Later on in Unity, I can make these behave and look exactly the same. Okay, remember that from the theory. What you see in Inkscape here, the most important thing is what we're defining are the boundaries for these things, not necessarily how they're going to behave or how they're going to act. I just, everything within this boundary has to behave and act um, and look the same, okay? But I can change that later on. So just because you define something some way doesn't mean you can't change it, but you can't change the shape of it later, okay? Very important.
So now I've got my deep rough define here and my rough define here. I'm sorry, and another custom here, which will be deep rough later on, behave like deep rough. Now I want to fill in everything else here with rough. And this is where this whole 99 comes into play, which is this pink shape, eh, magenta, if you want to call it, all the way over here in the right, right bottom. So let's back up here. I have my shape tool turned on. And now what I'm going to do is you can see the perimeter of the course right here. This is going to probably going to be, I should be have this behave as deep rough out here. And then everything on the course that I haven't splined should be regular rough. So what I'm going to do, and I would do normally be a, very, a little bit more meticulous about tracing out this line up here along this like forest edge. And because we're only doing two holes, I'm just going to go out to here. Okay. Now, if I had all my holes splined, remember from our theory videos that hole 99 has to encompass everything. Nothing can go outside the perimeter of hole 99. In that case, that's what we have here, but it's on top of everything, right? Because I put it on, it's actually in my hole one. So let me change this first of all to hole 99. You can see that over here, look where my mouse is. When I put it over there, it says hole 99, no blend. So I'm going to define that, but it's still on top. So what am I going to do here? Well, let me see. Let me just create a new layer. And I'm going to call this hole 99. Whoops, not 9999. Uh, I'm going to put it, I can change this to, oh, it looks like it's going to go above. That's fine. So it's up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this all the way down and I'm going to stick it right here. Now I made sure that this isn't underneath hole two. It is a layer separate. It's above my satellite. It's beneath my hole two. And now what I can do is I can highlight this shape. Whoops. I have to be in my selector tool, highlight this shape, right click on it. And actually it's coming up on my other screen. Let me show you here. Here's my shape, right click on it. Ah, there's a menu that comes up. Unfortunately, it's coming up on my other monitor because I'm doing some funky stuff with my screen share. I'm right clicking and I'm selecting move to layer. Okay. And when I do that, I get this screen and now I can take the shape and I can move it to whole 99. So that was based on a right click. Sorry, you couldn't see that. It's just for me uh, doing my screen share. So now you can see that has been moved underneath and my whole 99 now encompasses everything. But oops, I made a mistake. What is that mistake? Well, two really. Down here, I'm cutting it pretty close to this uh, this uh, T box from the driving range. That's a little too close. And I didn't encompass this bunker. So that's going to cause a problem as well. So let me go to my node selection tool. And keep in mind, I would have done a better job of selecting and going across this forest line. And I'm sure you guys will be a little bit more meticulous in your courses. Um, but now that's around that bunker. And then down here, I'm going to select this side. And now I am have easily cleared this T box down here from the driving range. And now I don't have anything else that is outside of my whole 99. So now, as you can see, the deep roughs that I did, okay, which will become deep, I got this custom and this deep rough here, they're going to cut through my 99, okay, and my 99 will be filled with rough. Now, how do I know that's going to be filled with rough? Because I get to define that later on when I throw this into Blender. You're going to see that. So whole 99, when we submit to Blender, there'll be a questionnaire, a form that you fill out, and you can say, what do I want my whole 99 to, to consist of and you can select rough you can select deep rough so decisions here that were made are that whole 99 can be any material you would want so if there was more rough i'm sorry if these if you wanted these two shapes here this one and this one to be rough and you wanted everything else to be deep rough you could do that okay you, you could reverse those because you get to select what you want your whole 99 to be now let's back out a little bit more and keep in mind that there's also our auto outer. Okay. Um, and if I zoom all the way out here and we can look at this entire golf course at once and what I've done limited wise, as far as splining goes, 
is I've got my whole 99, then everything else outside of this will also automatically get filled in with what we call the auto outer. You will then be able, and when we, before we submit to Blender during the form that we submit to Blender, you'll see later on, you can select what you want that auto outer to be. In this case, I'm gonna have it be deep rough, okay? So you have some flexibility here and what you really need to do, and I don't like to do my whole 99 early on, I kind of like to save it for last, and I can save it here because, well, it, it hides our satellite overlay, right? Uh, so it's really hard to see, but I can hide it, so no big deal. But we have to make a decision here, which is, okay, what, how much spline do you wanna do? And ultimately, what is the majority of this area that you don't wanna spline? In this case, it's rough for me. For your course, if you're doing a links course, it might be deep rough, okay? You're just gonna need to make that decision. And then just be aware of whatever is outside of the whole 99, between the whole 99, and then the boundary of our terrain, which is right here, this will get filled in with our auto 99, and you can select that material as well. There's nothing wrong with making it the same as your 99. It's completely up to you. You got lots of flexibility there.